Good evening. Good evening. The meeting of the Street Memorial Library Board of Pros is now called to order at 4 p.m. on Monday, May 22nd, 22nd. We have a formal present. Introduction of attendees will not be necessary today, so we're going to file for a moment of silence and Finally, we got confirmation from the parish 
and you were given a memo from uh, Todd Hopkins, who's the commission clerk from May 5, 2017, where they have finally cleaned up the joint vote voting members board of control ordinance. And what it comes down to is now uh, the statement in the current ordinance is incorrect when it says that the mayor and uh, tree court the president of the parish commissioner are voting ex officio members of this board that was incorrect the original ordinance ordinance from back in the 70s says they are to be non-voting members so now that has been corrected the uh, city had already done that the parish had not so the parish is now joined with the city cleaned up their ordinance and this memo now allows us to complete our bylaws and have them reflect everything accurately. After three meetings of discussing bylaws, we finally got it all set straight. But it did take a little bit of a, a legal research on the part of the parish to get it straightened out and it will be updated in what they call the Municipio database, which hold most of the uh, municipalities code ordinances throughout the, the nation. And once that has been updated, it will be updated everywhere. So, yes, sir. Since so there are non-voting members, I assume that we will not count them in the party of the board. Correct, sir. That, that's yes. shown also here on the um, board. That, that was the reason for trying to get that cleaned okay. up was to determine it. Or at one location, you pay 17, pay 8 of the bylaws. Section 44, what page on the bylaws? 8 of the bylaws at the bottom page. Bottom page in blue is if you pay 17 and that could be covered. You can see in the That, that was the only item that had not been corrected and discussed.
new business. Report of finance committee meeting in April 24th, 2017. Okay, the finance committee chair is not present tonight, so we're going to give a report for her. Finance committee met on April 24th. Judy Lincoln and myself are present to our program report. Uh, meeting started at 1030. Basically, the finance committee was to the presentation by Jim Felton, a uh, proposed budget amendment, which was to replace the form of the main uh, which thanked the form of the second for the personal services, uh, the current charter system, as well as the need to transfer the maintenance and repairs and the contractual services. We moved that, uh, seconded and approved that the finance committee would approve this Budget adjustment, adjustment, and the committee is ready. Do we have a report from the executive committee? I chair of that committee. We had two members present, one after. The meeting was called at morning at 11 a.m.
told us that we didn't have as much money as we had to. We had to do that emergency budget cut. That was one of the things that went off the table. So now that we see the opportunity, we really want to take advantage of it. It's a place that's been running on its last legs for quite a while now. We don't know how much longer. And I don't think we want to chance it any longer than we have to. So it would be a good thing to get it done this year while we have this blessing of extra money. So we've got it. Susan has already started working on the um, bid. I think that's the word I'm looking for, the bid proposal. And uh, it's working its way through the city process.
elect a president, vice president, and a secretary, who shall be the executive director of the library at the executive board. Okay? Now, elect officers shall be elected annually by a majority vote of the trustees at the regular board meeting in November. We follow the guidelines, yeah? The nominating committee shall be appointed at the September board meeting and present and be presented a state of office of review and vote of the school board in November board meeting. We know that, okay? Our term should be one year following the election in November and shall serve for term of one year as required by the Library Law of Louisiana. You go to the handbook of the Library of Trustees. Okay, the, let me see, let me see what the term also shall hold one year, we just said that. Okay, resignation. Any officer who choose to resign should do so by giving a written notice to the board, the president of the secretary of treasury. Resignation should take effect on the date of the receipt of search notice or in a later time specified. And I think we've had someone to read to all uh, resign. And I think we went through the legal going to the mayor and we waiting on what? The mayor to appoint someone. Okay? So we've done our part, okay? Now, if you want to resign from the board, Tom, any officer who choose to resign to do so by giving written notice <laughs> to the board, the president of the secretary of treasury, resignation take effect on the date of receipt of search notice of any later time. So you want to be the secretary of the secretary of okay? Now, removal from the board, okay, y'all, you better not move me from the board. A board office also may be removed from the board by majority vote for non-compliance with any part of the library board adopted by laws. And I can say this, the girls were with me. A couple of years ago, we went through this, didn't we, Jim? We went through something like this. We should have had these. Did we have these rules then, Jim? Mm -hmm. Did we have those rules then? We went through all those changes a couple of years ago. We're going to roll with another group. It was another group. That's right. We had no group. We're going to be there. Some of them said, well, some of the rules didn't. Governance rules? Yeah, the governance. We didn't. Some of them saw no rules, didn't we? I know it. I got that. They said, they're going to read it now. That's right. The library board adopted bylaws of conduct, which impair the efficiency of the public service and they are real and substantial relation to the efficient and all the operation of the public service. In any instance of removal by majority vote, a written notice from the board shall be provided to the office being removed. The notice shall include reason for removal and the date and effect for removal. But we took all this out and what we was doing. If a person is removed from the office on the board, an office on the board, Pressure remain a member of the board unless until the person is removed by the appointing authority. Who the appointing authority? Okay, vacancies, vacancies of the office should be filled in the manner of time. But we already know that we have a vacancy on the board and we're just waiting on them to send us somebody, right? Uh, then we, we have to prove that. No. We don't. It has to be approved by the city council of the parish. If they come from the parish, the parish has to approve correct, it by correct. the city council. But the mayor will be the one. I think our appointment is through the mayor. Current right? vacancy. So the mayor will have city. to do that. Okay. We did. We did send a list of, of possible candidates that the, the board okay. vetted and, and liked. That, that does is, not mean they have to take that suggestion. I think that's it. If something else, I need one more thing. I need to to say, but I. It was something that was really, it was all right, but it just said I just wish I could, oh yeah, the code of ethics, and then we all took care of the uh, ethics, right? And you know, I found out, I was just talking to some people, we were just talking, and I found that there, some people do not want to get on a board when they have to do their ethics, or turn in their financial report. I didn't know, that I asked somebody, and they said, uh-uh, they're going to your business too much. But to me, uh, and I guess it's, I, I don't know why you have to turn in the financial thing, but it's no question for me. But anyway, that's why that core ethics is very important as a board member. Mm -hmm. That's it. And of course, it's for me. Thank you. I said it because it's going to cut it out. Okay. 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 Who would you intend?
picked up with that, huh? Yeah, oh, by the way, take a picture. We are following, we're not even being compliant, y'all. So they can always pull this up, we're not breaking the law. <laughs> oh, I need that book then. We got a lawyer watching Huh? We got a lawyer. Uh, not the one in our page. <laughs> This is this is more than an update. This is this is like ninety percent of it. We are about to watch these screens. We will share with you what myself, Ms. Simmons, Ms. Bonnet, and lots of other staff members, town hall people, uh, the commission that was put together by the board have all worked together over the last five months, and this is some of what we come up with. First off, I share with you what Sandra Nelson shared with you before and shared with lots of other different individuals. For those of you who do not know who Sandra Nelson is, she is the Public Library Association guru when it comes to strategic planning. And she's very fond of this proverb that says, tomorrow belongs to the people who plan for it today. What have we been doing? We have been defining the vision of the library, identifying community needs, and coming up with a strategic plan to focus on the top five library service responses. First, though, our friend and consultant, Lisa Simmons, used the Public Library Data Service Database to do what is part of our standard strategic planning uh, which is pure library comparison. We did two groups for you. We actually did some libraries selected outside of our state that have approximately the same size service area. And then we decided to compare ourselves to some libraries here in the great state of Louisiana that are in the top 10 of the standard statistical measures. Uh, just wanted stated for the record, three of those libraries, New Orleans, Jefferson Parish, and East Baton Rouge Parish, are half of what are considered the big six libraries in the state. Lafayette is the other one that we uh, added to that, and it's closest to our library in size of service area and total revenue. Uh, much the way that when we do our statistical measures quarterly of our libraries and the way the Broadmoor branch sticks out there, like this big giant elephant moving through the china shop. Um, as we look through these statistics, understand that East Baton Rouge is our broad one in these comparisons. John, yes, where are we on the, the ranking of We're number seven. Oh, we're number seven. I have to go and take a look at that. But I know uh, we are number seven technically, even though we're the fourth largest. Budget-wise, we don't make it. What's the measure? The, the money, budget oh, revenue. Okay. But hey, being number seven is not so bad. Anyway, uh, as you can see here, our out-of-state peer group, Leon County. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of that, that's Tallahassee in Florida. They've got a population of 281,000, approximately seven million in total revenue. They've got seven branches, uh, a little over 100 FTE staff-wise, and they're only open 300 hours a week. Um, whereas we have 253 as of the last real census, um, about almost 16 million total revenue, 21 branches, 184.85 FTE staff-wise, and we are open 1,026 hours. St. Petersburg, they have approximately the same number of populations we do. Uh, again, for Florida, rather small annual budget, uh, 6.3 million, uh, only seven branches, barely 79 FTE, and they're only open 374 
hours a week. Then we have Athens Regional Library System, uh, the other side of uh, Atlanta in Georgia. They're a little bit smaller college town, 228,000 population, a very small budget, 4.1 million, 11 branches, 64 staff, 439 hours per week. And then Birmingham Public Library with only 212,000 population, but a very healthy 15.4 million dollars in total revenue, 19 branches, none of which are uh, small as some of our part-time branches, uh, a whopping 288.5 FTE staff-wise, and yet they're only open 933 hours a week. Now our in-state peer group, a little bit different. We've got East Baton Rouge, almost half a million people there, and uh, 40 Three million dollars in annual revenue. We've got 14 branches in East Baton Rouge, 400 staff, and 975 hours a week. Jefferson, uh, a little bit smaller, 436,000 in population, uh, nice size budget, 22 million annually, 15 branches, almost 200 staff, 820 hours a week. New Orleans, uh, again, smaller population, 390,000 almost. Um, rather small budget of only 10 million, 14 branches, 178 uh, FTE, and almost 600 hours a week. And then you have Shreve again, and then we have Lafayette with 240,000, 13 million, uh, nine branches, 122 staff, and they're only open for so, before we go any further, I'm going to hand out those cheat sheets so you can keep all this information in mind as we go through all this stuff. It would be helpful to refer back and take a look at the number of branches, take a look at the number of hours as we're doing this, and that way it, it helps keep our comparisons of apples to apples. One of, one of the very first things we look at when, when doing a statistical comparison is we do revenue per capita. And as you can see here, uh, when you take that population and divide the revenue up, we get quite a large jump. East Baton Rouge, again, is that, that, that juggernaut there at $96 per capita. Birmingham comes in second at 72. Shreve Memorial, a respectable $62 per person. Uh, Lafayette, not far behind us at 55. Jefferson at 50. I can, I can say um, that Florida and Georgia do not support their libraries at the same amount of money that Louisiana does. So, in conclusion, we are well funded compared to others, but yeah, when we start considering some of our other things, as far as number of branches, number of staff members, and overall, it, it, our budget is not quite as bountiful as it seems right here. But it, again, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Registered borrowers per capita is one of those that can be misleading, but it's also a standard. Um, if you just want to move the decimal two places on the per capita, that gives you the percentage of the overall population. So you can see Lafayette, Parish has 84% of their population uh, with a library card. East Baton Rouge at 83, Birmingham there. Again, we're at a respectable 61%. Uh, it's rather sad that Jefferson Parish and New Orleans are where they are. Uh, again, 60 is not a bad place to be. We have to caution you. Sometimes uh, registered borrowers depends on how often they purge their database. We purge ours, and some of them might not. Hard to tell, but we take it at face value. And again, Tree Memorial Library, a respectable number. Staff, full-time employee equivalents, per capita. Um, wow, we're number three up there. Again, Birmingham spends a lot of its money, which I'm not quite sure where they suffer. We put a lot of our money in our collections. We put a lot of our money in our computers. Um, 
They may not put as much, as far as I can tell, and we'll take a look here in a moment at uh, their collection. Muddies, remember that, but we're Birmingham and East Baton Rouge, of course East Baton Rouge, you, you almost want to eliminate them. They, they spend so much money, they have so much money to spend. Uh, we do all right. Uh, you see significant drop off there after us to Lafayette, and I sincerely feel bad again for Florida and the state of Georgia, those three branches are truly representing all the smaller average size library systems in those two states. Total materials, again, per capita, East Baton Rouge. Might as well not even consider them. Jefferson does spend an awful lot of money. Um, we've had some healthy debates as to does materials and hours lead to uh, circulation numbers. Some of us think that holds true. Uh, Shreve Memorial, materials is up from the previous year. It will be up again. We are moving toward the state minimum standard of 10% uh, for this next upcoming annual budget, so that will rise. You can see again where Birmingham does not spend about as uh, much as a dollar drop off there. And I again feel bad for the three systems in Florida and Georgia. Circulation per capita is another one of those standard measures. Um, Lafayette, very, very respectable for a library system, no larger than they are and their, their budget. East Baton Rouge, again, is there. The three Florida and Georgia library systems do an impressive amount of circulation. Does that count as electronic materials? That's everything. Okay. Um, what, what Samantha did a little bit more research, and what we see is that the those three areas there, Tallahassee, St. Petersburg, and Athens also have rather large universities associated with them, so uh, that may help explain why the circulation is, is up in those areas. Uh, it doesn't explain why New Orleans is down as low as it is, considering it's got several nice universities there. Uh, but 4.4 uh, is nothing to be ashamed of. You see, you take the 7.4 out and drop the 3 out and look at the average there, and it's, it's not that far. We're okay. Uh, staff per 1,000 serfs is one of those that uh, lets us kind of look at how much uh, bang for the buck we're getting for our staff. And uh, I hate to say it, that happens in St. Petersburg and Leon County, they are woefully understaffed, so you can see it with decent circulation. Uh, again, our circulation is not that bad when you just take a look at all the circulation numbers. 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, and we're at 1.1. All that is merely a couple hundred thousand over, over that, so it's not a big difference. So, but uh, we have to give it to our 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 poor library systems. They do get a lot of bang for the buck. Um, we will be investigating some of their secrets. Visits per capita is interesting. Um, we're about average compared to all our peers. 1.8 is not bad. Birmingham, again, um, they don't spend a lot of money on their uh, materials. So I'm guessing, from what we can tell, when we, we will look here in a minute at uh, reference usage, what we couldn't get is computer usage. We couldn't get a, a statistic for that. But my belief is that Birmingham uh, puts a lot of emphasis on the computer and reference. And that's not a bad thing. That's what they need. Is that's what their community needs. Sure. Yes, ma'am. They're not unique. Every time someone goes through the door, if you were to go through the door four times, it counts for business. Does it count? Check it out. It actually, you have to go through the door. It, 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 it's hard for visits, but they're, they're not unique visits, unfortunately. Uh, programs per capita, I'm so proud of us. Take, take the juggernaut East Baton Rouge out of, out of that figure, and we're number one. Um, 
We have to give our, our friends in Florida and Alabama and Georgia their, their due. They do quite well. Um, New Orleans even, not straggling there. But uh, we can understand why Baton Rouge has uh, the programs per capita. In a minute, you're going to see program visits per capita, and that's an astounding number. But when you've got $43 million a year to spend, it, and uh, it's no doubt they have 14,000 to our 5,000. Here's that number of program attendance. You can see they have more people attend programs at their system than they actually have population. That's an astounding figure. But we're not going to try over 0.48. That's almost half of our population attending a program. That's a, that's a good number. Especially when you look down there at Jefferson Parish and Leon County. Programs per staff, that's another one to see how much bang we're getting the buck out of, out of our staff members. And you can see there, we get quite a bit of bang for our buck for our staff. Uh, 26 programs per staff, they're busy. Um, Athens, I'm not, I'm just astounded. Uh, I, can, I can explain that roof, the money they spend. Athens has to be just crazy busy get that kind of uh, programming numbers. But uh, we give them their due. But we're also quite proud of our numbers there. Uh, attendance per program, again, this is not bad. We're, we're down a little bit, but 25.1, when you look at the difference in the spread, it's 33 down to 15. You drop top to the bottom, the average there. We're doing OK at 25. Again, Leon County, they must be commended for providing fewer programs for phenomenal attendance. They may, when I was looking at their website, one of the things they did was those, those super programs, as opposed to a lot of our like dropping programs and stuff of that nature. They spend a lot of their time on, on big name programs. So uh, they get paying for their butt money. Reference per capita, uh, my conclusion here is if you've got enough hours, enough branch, and enough staff, people will ask you questions. We have enough hours, enough staff, enough locations to be number two in that. Birmingham also has a lot of staff, a lot of locations, a lot of hours. Baton Rouge also. You start to see a little bit of a drop off there in New Orleans, but New Orleans doesn't have near about the staff or hours or branches to do, so they are to be commended for what they've done here. Lafayette, on the other hand, I don't, obviously people don't ask questions down there, but they do check out books and attend programs. So every community has its own special needs. Discussion. I have to. Thank these two guys here for doing a lot of hard work, for putting all this together for us. Um, some of our staff wanted to know exactly how we compared Ohio, California, Maryland, and Wisconsin. Lynn is putting together a report for that. I can tell you this, our circulation numbers are not going to compare with those areas, but everything else is Okay, so um, we, we took five library systems that had similar um, service areas and similar budgets and all things considered, um, not bad except for our circulation compared with the, the northern sort of states, it's not the same. Yes, ma'am. Um, um, it's public library data service and um, it's uh, put together by PLA, and uh, we can let you look at it. We have a subscription, and what it is, it's, it's all the um, PLDS information that we gather every year and turn into PLA. I will let you know. We can let you have that. What is the next step in our security plan? Yeah. What is the next step in our strategic planning process? 
oh, we've got quite a few different things to go. This, we're just discussing this peer comparison. We've got about five more steps here, and then, then, I'll, then I'll tell you what we're going to get to as far as that goes. But this is, we're just discussing our peer comparison right now. All of this data, I state, and in state. Mm -hmm. How is this, you're making a comparison, I understand that, to see exactly which room and where it stands in reference to these other groups. Right. How is this information going to play a part in tree memorials to be planned? What it lets us do is this is like. Not really. This is like going to the doctor for us and getting an annual checkup. And this, we know where our strengths are now. We know where our weaknesses are. So we take this information and we look at it and compare it to what our community needs are. And from there, we start making some game plans to make sure that our strengths and community needs kind of match. And if we have a weakness in that area, which at this time, it's almost amazing going through our community needs. They, they match our strengths, which is fortunate for us, but not everywhere. So circulation is one of those things we're going to have to continue to work on. So. Okay, now with these meetings that we have, mm -hmm. the different areas, right. that too is going to play a part. Actually, all that information Samantha is putting together, we're going to do those same exercises here with you guys and just just like we did with the commission and all of the committee you guys put together, all the town halls that we did. We take all that information along with all the survey information that we have. We put that together and then we're going to create five staff committees to take and look at the five service priorities that were selected as the top, and from there, make a game plan on how to be what we call five-star service in those five things. This whole exercise is really looking at which resources we want to allocate to which services, because we cannot, out of the 19 standard library services, we can't do all of them at five-star level. We can discuss that in a moment. Basically, what, what we're going to use this information for is, A, it's like going to the doctor and getting our wellness checkup. And from there, we know what our strengths are, we know what our weaknesses are, and when we start doing our community needs, we look at that and, and use that information to help us tweak what we may need to do to achieve those goals as far as the community needs. Okay, community needs. <coughs> oh, yeah. From branches, individual that, that was actually the, the, the services that the, the when we did the survey, and then question number seven was, which do you think should be the top five? Now, what we do is we take those services, those priorities, and then we look at each of our areas, each of the individual community needs, and we'll map that out. What, that's just like, take Moortown, for example, compared to, say, Cedar Brook. Moortown doesn't have a lot of programming numbers. Moortown doesn't have a lot of reference usage. What Moortown does is have an outrageous, I'd say outrageous, but a healthy amount of computer usage. So we can tell by that community, that community needs more help in digital divide, more computer training, more of those type of things. Where Cedar Grove looks at us and they're just, they've got interesting issues, but they're kind of healthy in all of their statistics. They're no Broadmoor, but they're okay. You take a look at all of the part-time branches, as, as Tom and I were talking about earlier. They're never going to have, well, except for uh, Blanchard and Orangeport, they're never going to have really great circulation numbers or really outrageous programming numbers. But you look at the visits there and the, the need for the community to have that place to come and meet, that's what we're looking at how to do programs for those part-time branches that allow for that almost senior recreation type center place. So we're using all of this and I've got, we're gonna to put together five um, committees of staff members and we're gonna have Samantha and Caleb sit in on all of them and come up with a game plan. But if, if you'll bear with me a few more minutes, I'll show you 
exactly how we're, we're going to get to that point. I've already told you the end destination. Now let me show you how we get there. We did that one more. Okay. When we get um, the information from Atkins, Wallet, Atkins, name Atkins, I think that is that we come coming down a lot. The fact that their meeting room is not large they're, they're not the only one that thinks their meeting room is not large enough. Uh, most, most of our neighborhood and regional branches um, think they need more space. Uh, Blanchard thinks it needs brand new buildings. So does Warren's Point. Um, we, we, we got to look at that. I went and walked at Atkins the other day. It's probably the easiest branch to increase the size of. Cedar Grove uh, has a uh, flat enough footprint, it probably wouldn't be that difficult. In fact, all of those branches were designed to be expanded. So what we're going to have to do is, after we get through with this, is take a look at uh, our facilities planning and go from there. But uh, we, we, we've got several ores out there. We've got, I, I can tell you from everybody I've talked to about the main library, we either got to solve the parking issue there or we've got to find another location in, in, in downtown and that as you know we've had that discussion there's no way we ever give up that current building so if, even if we were to sit here and create a new branch downtown we'd have to find use for that branch everybody talks about wanting to have a maker space in the downtown um, branch and that's great but my risk manager over here will tell you the toxic fumes from uh, 3D printers create some interesting issues for us as far as ventilation and stuff like that. So we, we've got a lot of work. This is, again, all, all we're really doing here with this strategic plan is, is kind of pointing us in the right direction. The hard work is coming. So um, at this time, yes? Again, um, I know we have to go through the, this this peer-to-peer -peer comparison, and again, it's it's not to throw stones at ourselves. It's not to make us look bad. It's merely to you know take that blood pressure check, see how the pulse is doing, how our vision you know it, it, it's a health check. And uh, let's be honest, um, as as demographics change. We may see Broadmoor circulation go down. We may not. Uh, the entire time I was in Shreveport, uh, I mean, Savannah, excuse me, the uh, Oglethorpe Mall Library never dropped out of being the number one library system. It, it, it had the location, location, location. Because of that, and Broadmoor seems to be that too. But that doesn't mean that more town and more important are important to their communities. So. Uh, the next part of this is our mission, mission, vision, and values exercises that we did with some staff. Uh, most of them were with our system meeting managers and a couple of directors roundtable luncheon groups. And out of our staff, we, we did an exercise where we sent them home with all different types of organizational values. We sent them with a list of 500 values. And then we sent them home with also a list of various types of ways libraries have come up with the organizational values. And one group at the uh, North Street branch kind of did a unique thing. It came up with service as our overall organizational value and defines service as support, empowerment, resources, 
vision, innovation, customer satisfaction, and ethics. We thought well, that was kind of creative. But we went on to define that a little bit better. By support, we say the Shreve Memorial staff work together to accomplish library goals. And those goals, in turn, support our community as it fulfills its dreams. By empowerment, we said knowledge is power. And Shreve Memorial finds, organizes, and makes that knowledge accessible to everyone. Resources, we said beach trees for relaxation, technology to bridge the digital divide, photocopy of census records from the 1880s, Shreve Memorial provides what patrons need when they need it. As far as vision, we define that as Shreve Memorial's programs and materials furnish a clear vision of the future and an unobstructed view of the past. Innovation was defined as Shreve Memorial seeks both to use innovative practices and to encourage the innovative spirit in our patrons. Customer satisfaction was defined as the most important measure of Shreve Memorial's success and is the favorable opinion of our patrons. And ethics is pretty standard. Street Memorial strives to be an organization that both embodies the best, best ethical practices and assists patrons in making sound <coughs> choices in a complicated world. I have to give our writers came up with all that. Great kudos. I had absolutely very little to do with it. Very proud of them. I think that embodies our organization and provides us with clear landmarks to move forward with. Any discussion? Now let's talk a little bit about mission and values. Both of those of you who have attended ALA or PLA in recent years know there are two competing uh, branding ideas out there. One of them is called Libraries Transforms. The other one is called Libraries Equal Education. One is from ALA, the other one is from Valerie Gross. Um, Library Transform basically is a public awareness campaign. If you've seen any of our social media recently and or our website, you've seen some of those Libraries Transforms um, messages. We like them, we like them a lot. Very happy ALA has spent a lot of money put that together for us. The other competing yet complementary uh, branding idea from Valerie is Libraries Equal Education. And she's got the three pillars there. I know it's hard to see on the, the little icon, but it, it goes self-directed research, which we otherwise know as lifelong education. It says research, assistance, and instruction. We know that as reference work. And it says instruction and, oh my, I can't read that. Enlightening experiences. Uh, basically, Ms. Gross argues that public libraries were originally established as educational institutions, and she thinks we should take that mantle back. And she was doing a fantastic job of helping us rebrand that. So when we went forward with our mission and uh, values exercises, we kept both of those ideas in mind. Because I, I do think it's important that uh, people are aware of our educational uh, niche in the parish, that we exist to support public schools and our secondary education. We also are there to help, as Step Forward says, to prepare children for kindergarten and first grade. So again, quickly, just for review, what is the mission statement? Basically defines the purpose of the organization and it answers three quick questions. What it does, who it does it for, and how it does it. We had, uh, well, I'll go over what a, a vision statement does. It, it tells what the desired future state after five or 10 years or more provides guidance and inspiration, but more importantly, it's an easy way for all employees to think about the organization and where it's going. So that, that was our goal with both the mission and vision statements. After some work, uh, 
You may recognize the first one there. The mission of the Shreve Memorial Library is to help residents of Caddo Parish reach the full potential. That's pulled straight from your bylaws. Then we started playing with the ideas from both um, Ms. Gross and Libraries Transform. The second one someone came up with was the mission of Shreve Memorial Library to educate and enlighten all residents of the parish. That gets the who and the what, but not necessarily the how. But it still is a good statement. Uh, Shreve Memorial transforms Caddo Parish lives with resources, services, and support to create a better world. We get a what, the who, and the how. We get transforms, and we get our education aspect in there. Uh, number four, Shreve Memorial Library freely offers informational resources and services, providing knowledge perspective and fun Caddo Parish citizens we love. It gives you what, who, and how. And during a lot of this discussion, there was a lot of about how much we love our patrons. So that puts that in there. The Shreve Memorial Library is a transformational hub of knowledge, learning, and activity for residents, professionals, and visitors of the parish. At this time, we, we've actually done this in several places. We've taken a vote on which one you like best. We're going to ask you if you would to also do ranking. Uh, number one is the one you like best. Number five is the one you like the least for the mission statement. Our vision statement is kind of already made up for us. Uh, we've just got three variations off of it. We've got dream, discover, and do, which if you think about it, does cover the uh, pillars of the education. Dream is lifelong learning, discover is reference, do is programming, right? So our various writers came up with these three. And you can rank them. If you don't like any of them, you can rewrite them. We've had staff do that. Um, then Samantha takes it all back and puts it all together. We won't tell you who's ahead at this time. Not, we don't want to influence you. I do think, though, if you take a look at all five of the mission statements. Did they say the vision statement? Did they say one? Yeah. yeah. Three, two. Yes, one, two, and three. I can tell you, I won't lie to you about that one. Um, most of the debate has been whether to go Street Memorial Library and you, Dream Discover Do, or Dream Discover Do, Street Memorial Library and you. Thing I'm going to do is let you know what this 
at, right after we go through what our community partners have done, then I'm going to share with you what our survey came up with. Our survey, we sent out 2,000, how many? Over 2,000. And, and, and close to 15% of that was non-library users, thanks to using uh, business community the, uh, access to their, their email database. They sent out a link for us. That's how sometimes you'll see, I don't use the library's response. So we, we got some of those. And uh, what I can, I can quickly tell you, as soon as we get through the community partners, which is just to show you that I think what our survey shows us is that what's already in the community, what our community partners have decided is important, our public has decided the same thing. So, and once we do that, then I'm going to show you the survey results. And we'll go through that quickly because really question number seven is the one you're interested in. We'll look at the one for hours because there's been lots of speculation about hours more hours, like the committee of 100 in, in my report that wants more hours because they heard that library branches were having their hours reduced. Well, that is true. During the summer, we do reduce our hours. That's one thing we may want to do away with. There are several of us in this room that would not have a problem with that. So, but we'll bring that up after the next budget cycle when we can see if we can actually afford that. Um, so the names that we gave, you know, those people met? Yes, ma'am. I, I hate to tell you, not as many of them showed up as they should have. It was rather disappointing. But those who did show up were very enthusiastic and vocal. <laughs> and very opinionated. Yeah, well, we, yeah. I, I, I say the, the board members who attended our town hall meetings got to see some very uh, lively discussion about some things. So, um, not as lively as Cedar Grove, though. That's perhaps the liveliest one. Anyway, community partners. Um, City of Shreveport, based on their strategic plan for 2015-2018, they've got a couple of things that uh, I think are important. They, they want to enhance current opportunities for a safe and inviting and friendly city. They want to create a positive environment that supports a visible and affordable high quality of life. And they want to support and partner with educational institutions to aid in workforce development. Uh, that's straight from their strategic plan and I agree with most of all of that. Um, the Shreveport Caddo Parish Metropolitan Planning Commission has this wonderful document called Shreveport Caddo 2030 Great Expectations. Uh, from it, you can see they want to make Shreveport Caddo a center of lifelong education and learning for all its citizens. They want to support arts and culture as a source of community pride and a distinctive economic competitive advantage. They want to enhance educational and economic access and opportunity for all residents. And they want to connect people in different neighborhoods and across barriers of race and class to work together for the benefit of the whole area. Can't disagree with any of that. Uh, the Caddo Parish Public School System wants academics to reduce the achievement gap, and they want family and community engagement to support student success. And that's from their Reimagine Caddo Plan for Excellence, which is basically their strategic plan. Now, as you can see, we've also got Step Forward, the Northwest Louisiana Association there. They support early childhood education, early literacy, middle grade, STEAM, STEM, you should call it STEAM, but they call it STEM, uh, youth citizenship, high school graduation through My Brother's Keeper, and workforce development. And that's when they strive together goals and objectives from the web board. So we can see here that all of our natural community partners' goals are compatible with us. So, now we've done a community needs survey. This is where Samantha and Lisa did a lot of hard work. And we asked, how many questions? Seven. Seven. Now, let me explain this statement to you. If you try to be everything to everyone, you'll be nothing to no one. When I told that to a certain staff member at a 
ranch near you. She got a little upset with me. She said, we are everything to everyone all the time. I tried to explain to her, but we're not. Let me demonstrate that statement. We have over 500, almost 600 computers for public access throughout our library system. That is better than the minimum state standard set by the state library. We exceed that. We do a wonderful job of providing computer access. However, we only have one genealogy library, Broadmoor and some resources there. Now, it's real nice genealogy library. It may be a five-star library service, but for me to provide five-star library genealogy service at all of our branches would be very, very expensive. So that may not be a top priority for us. Not trying. We want to focus our resources on a couple places, places, but not every branch. But we can cross that digital divide everywhere, lots of computers. And that's what I mean by that. What are we doing with this? We're allocating our resources to society. Which of these 19 service responses from the Public Library Association we really want to focus on? We're not going to not do any of them, but which one did the community think was most important? You've got to be an informed citizen, build successful enterprises, celebrate diversity, connect to the online world, create young readers, start your <coughs> roots in genealogy, express your creativity, get fast facts, know your community, learn to read and write, make career choices, make informed decisions, satisfy curiosity, stimulate imagination, which is a fun way of saying reading, viewing, and listening for pleasure, succeed in school, Understand how to find and evaluate, and use information, visit a comfortable place, and welcome to the United States. Those are not exactly the terms I would have used, but that's how PLA defines this. That's our services. There is also the other, which includes everything from faxing services to some places that actually do passport services now. And other republics, which is something we looked at. So interesting things out there. <coughs> other. So we asked a couple of questions. As I said, I yes, ma'am. Satisfying curiosity and lifelong learning. 
I think everybody should be doing that. And that's why I was asking you to do that and get a pulse of, get the pulse of our libraries and what they're doing and, and what they're doing um, so that we can see what we're doing overall, so we can see where our weaknesses are, like a needs assessment, so we can see where our weaknesses are. And during our strategic planning, we can focus on or have our um, libraries or staff to focus on whatever, whatever the weaknesses are, mm -hmm. in particular branches. I, I understand the need, needs assessment part. We kind of went with the other direction because we do all of that. And now equitable or not depends on the community need. Uh, again, with genealogy, we're not going to have that everywhere, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure if someone walks into any one of our libraries and wants to find reading, viewing, or listening materials, they're going to get the same level of service anywhere. Um, I, 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 you know, we're moving toward getting more and more classes out there. Uh, even at the part-time libraries, we've made a, a mobile laptop um, lab so that they can offer those classes. They want to argue with me that there's no demand for that. I argue back that, yeah, I think there is. If you'd offer it more often, you might, you might see people show up. It's an ongoing process with your needs assessment. I think all of them need to be done. Well, some of them we're, we're doing quite well at, but all of them have places for growth and improvement. What I really think, and what, what you'll let me show you here, let me just jump a few questions here. When we ask what are the primary reasons you visit the library, the top five, across all of them was to stimulate imagination, which is basically to check out materials, right? Satisfy curiosity, that's lifelong learning, to visit a comfortable place, early literacy, and to make informed decisions, be an informed citizen. Then we asked the question a little differently. We said, what do you feel are the top five service priorities for the library? And it came back, a lot of them were the same, but in a different order. Early literacy became number one. Stimulate imagination, number two. Satisfy curiosity, get fast facts, and be an informed citizen. Connecting to the online world was in there, but we're not going to be able to do any better than what we're doing right now, other than there, we've got something in mind for, we're going to have to see if we can pay for it, but there's what you can now loan hot, hot Wi-Fi spots from the library that you can check out and take home and have a Wi-Fi spot in your home if you do not have internet access. Um, it's going on in several places. We're looking at that. I want to, I'd like to see if I can put that next year's budget. That's about the only way I know we could improve connecting to the online world. Um, there are a few others that came up in the survey. In fact, if we look at it, I took what you guys did in your last strategic plan and we took out connecting to the online world and we took out visiting a comfortable place because those two are always going to be our top priority, right? We're going to do the best we can with connecting to the online world. We're always going to try and make our, our libraries a comfortable place. So we took the other seven and we only wanted five service priorities. Well, there's a couple places where those other ones work well together. If you look there, what the board and Dr. Heason did last time was take early literacy, stimulate imagination, zero through 17, and homework help, and create a new service priority, which is create and, and maintain young readers then stimulate imagination is just focused on 18 and above because the below 18 is worked in with early literacy. Lifelong learning and information fluency go hand in hand together. So there's no reason we can't take number seven and add it to number four to create 
a different twist on satisfied curiosity. We don't have to necessarily keep ourselves defined by PLA service responses. We can look forward and go, well, those two work together. Why don't we do that? Because um, really, when you looked at the top nine service out of those 18, they were all things that we already, as you say, with our needs assessment, do quite well. So if we're going to allocate our resources that way, I think we ought to do this way. And ready reference, we do a phenomenal job of that. You can get reference service from text, email, telephone, or in person. The only way to do that any better would be for us to keep somebody online 24-7. And we could do that, but that may cost more money than we can afford right now. But based on our survey results, this is our top five service priorities. Does that kind of, do you see where the need <coughs> assessment and the service priorities go hand in hand? So this is what we've been doing in our town halls. We've been asking folks, and this is kind of what we've been doing with our needs assessment type parts. We've been asking, Three simple questions. And we'd like to do that here. What do you like about your library? This is the very first thing. Samantha writes fairly fast, so be the first person to volunteer. Let me, let me share with you today, I had a gentleman visiting from Houston, Texas who called me up to tell me how great Kenya at Cedar Grove is today. He impressed her that much. He, he just stepped outside, grabbed his cell phone, and he called me. It's great to hear. And I, I, get those, I get more complimentary phone calls than I get complaints, and that is a wonderful thing to have. Don't stop. Come now, Tom. All right, well, if you have nothing else to add, the next question we've been asking is what would you like your library to do more of? Or if we're not doing it at all, what would you like to see us do? Uh-huh. Oh, I promise you one more percent next next year if we can squeeze it. One more percent. I want to get to 10%. Okay. 
She's got six-figure marketing budget dreams. I'm trying to, ow. I'm doing a limit now. It started out at six figures. Oh. You know, the reason I said that, we do a lot of things. Well, we do a thing, but don't get You and I have heard that. Who, who was our commissioner? Mr. Bradford was there. He said the same thing. We've had uh, Commissioner Middleton said the same thing. That they all say this is one of the best resources in the parish and nobody knows about it. And we, we've seen that by our circulation, we've seen that by our registration. So is it is it we're not out in the community enough? I think our community engagement team is getting out there more and more. I think it is a marketing thing. Well, like for example, Bozier's uh, outreach library does like an article in the time. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, it breaks my heart to see it. I mean, could we be doing something like, you know, some of the morning newscasts on a regular basis, kind of what's happening at the library, what's new with the library? Um, I guess going back to the first page, and see if you can write a few more, I think we do a good job about social media. With Caleb that does all that, he's really good with that. I really, um, I follow all the different ones, and he's very quick to respond, which is great. Um, but I just think, if, unless you're like a library member like me, <laughs> you don't know the following that kind of stuff, so. Um, Maybe even billboards or something. I'm, I'm, I, I've just seen hints of her marketing plan. She's very ambitious. If I can give her half the budget she wants, we will be well known. Well, I mean, that and, might be a priority that we talk about because we do need people to know what we do because we always kind of vote for it. it, it I, 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 I think when we really start looking at all this, that is our biggest problem. And that's what we heard at all these town hall meetings. Mm -hmm. People don't know what we do. And I will say that we have been doing a better job of getting on the morning news show. Yeah. I was just on two morning news shows Friday and talked about our summer meetings. In, in so fact, when I when, when I do Jenny's report, I will I will give you some um, 
statistics on just how well we've been hitting the media. Oh, yeah. And what I just heard a lot of about was the increase in the number of people that are Retail world that's called up so. We saw that we saw that being done very well at Lafayette. Yeah, I have to I have to admit Lafayette did some very very interesting things, but so did you know East Baton Rouge is nothing, but they've got the money, which we're going to have to be creative and learn how to do a lot of these things, and and we've got uh, Samantha's got a, a big to do list. Uh, the next thing we're going to try and do is get a foundation up and running so we can try and keep some of the to raise some additional money. So not only, sponsor, not only sponsorships for Sunday hours, but for marketing perhaps and those other things so that we don't have to uh, stretch an already tight budget any tighter. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And uh, equity, 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 we might not be able to achieve equity, but we can achieve equity in all the libraries. Um, 
I'll share with you that for our part-time branches, one of the ideas that came up was um, doing the on-spot story times. On-call, on-spot. And I think we saw that just on Instagram the other day where it actually already happened. Young lady walks in, mom, young lady walk in and, and break out right there in a story time for that one child. So start to craft little responses and ideas to, to the needs as we see it. So anyway, Samantha can run as fast, almost as fast as you can shout it out. So have at it. What, what do you see as creating and maintaining young readers, five star service? Again, I threw my idea out there. You heard book festival. Um, I, I can tell you one thing we've already, that's already come out of this is YouTube story times. We've started those, and we've got our third one up and running now. That's something that's come out of this. Um, come on, Shannon. You got to have one for me. We did. We talked. Now, what I think, I think when you and I were having that conversation with, with um, uh, Councilman Bradford, it was webinars for uh, young, we were trying to figure out how to do every child ready to read for uh, parents and caregivers on YouTube. Right. Yeah, yeah. Even though we've got copyright issues with that, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, I think if we can get the virtual student library card, that would be a good thing. And I think, um, Right, right, right here. I, I'm trying to get a certain academic officer to send me an email that says yes. That's all I want. And has the library thought about, you know, the particular branches or any department system do a prime time library branch where they have the... Is that where they do the, the family dinners after? Yeah. Yeah, we're all, Julie's working on that now. Yeah, I saw, I, saw, I saw that at LLA, and we, we, we've had success with that before here, so we decided to try it again. Story time in the heart. Story time in the heart. Um, I like that idea. Our friends down in Natchitoches do not only story time, but they, they do story time and then do a movie in the park. I know I've kept you here for a long time. I do apologize. Uh, We've only got a few more to do. How about? Yeah, I thought about. Um, thought we have a, a month, a library month, or something. Yeah. Hey. I never thought about this. Uh, you know, I know you about. I'm not talking about the book moment. I'm thinking about you know the kids. I mean the one into the schools. Which costumes on, you know, like the character. That one that one week you visit elementary school, they can be doing the lunch time and just that character walk in, walk into that cafeteria or something, or either walk into that column into an auditorium, that one whatever book you want to read for the character, walk in during that month and just tell that story. It's surprising. Kids go to the auditorium and what they're going for. Here come down the aisle two or three characters. And they go into safety. And they gonna know exact. Still, I know we do um about the suits, but then again, you need like you said, not a festival. Yeah. You could do it one either off month and just bust in on that and just say, look, and whatever character coming, you know. Yeah. And that way you introduce books other than Doctor Suits. Other than Doctor Suits. You can work with your extremist people <laughs> librarians too. <laughs> Pull that out. Do that. Again. Work with Bible. Are you claustrophobic in the costume? You ever, you ever done Pete the Cat or Clifford? Okay. I tell you, I, I've been in Clifford. A little claustrophobic. All right, five stars. Stimulate imagination. What besides a better website? A better novel list, a better interaction, better holds, better this, better displays for our books. What else do we do? Do, do you 
do you understand what I mean by novelists? We, that's, that's something we purchased this year. It is a wonderful database. You can say, I love Tom Clancy. You can write Tom Clancy in there and it'll say, you need to read these books. It is, it is a reader's advisory database. It's one of the best ones out there and we got it this year. The state used to have it, it, it dropped it, we picked it up. I, I think that's one of the best ways we can do stimulate imagination. We're doing, we're, we're buying more e-books to help do that, we're doing more streaming. Um, we're doing, say what? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say that for her. She can tell you about Niche Academy when she does her report. Uh, wow, what a resource. Um, niche Academy? Niche Academy. Oh. Um, I think you, I mean, I hate to go back to you, y'all, but I mean, it is amazing. That's okay. Any idea we can take and modify and make it ours is okay. Well, they have access to Linda.com. I don't even know if it's still a thing. But that's it like is. I think Linda, Niche Academy will do what they, that does, and it, it only costs us $5,000. Mm -hmm. What was the website? It's linda.com, but it's a... Um, I think LinkedIn it bought it, didn't it? Somebody bought it. But I used to use it all the time when I was in school. And I mean, it would be... I would start a subscription person. You're going to love Niche Academy. And they have learned from life and some other stuff. But also doing things like they have the guides for different topics, I think we're going to have to do for public libraries. The guys are like, let's say there's a topic like the Red River. A good guy is like kind of a visual deal where they have different tabs and different information. So if you're interested in the, I don't know any of my river so I'm just here, the flow of the river. How big is it? Um, how did it form? Um, tap dancing here. <laughs> You know, Captain Henry Miller Shreve, you know, it will tell you different things of who you are. But it's about any topic you decide on. If there's a theme that we're doing for a program, you create a good guy for that and have all that information. Mm -hmm. Sounds like that need to go to work with public library program, doesn't it? Hey John, if you want to find that, I'll put uh, the live notes on my text and the library. Oh, yeah. And the PhD and all yeah, the and, and that's something we had great success with. Yeah, the the, the uh, um, it's called Pause to Read ALA's program, and uh, we had great success with it in Savannah. Uh, we can only find a couple of the, the properly trained dogs. It has to be what kind of dog? They have to be trained. Trained service, service dogs. Service there you go. Know, that's the word I was looking for. And there aren't as many of them in this area as you would like. If I had it, uh, we would have uh, a service dog in all of our branches every Saturday. It's a, it's a wonderful thing when you see a child who has uh, difficult reading and they sit down with that dog, the dog's not judgmental, the dog just, you know, just loves the kid and loves the kid reading too. It just warms your heart. I tell you, it's a great program. And Julie can't find enough service dogs. We do have it one place, I think. Yeah, so Okay, I know um, we had a, a, my first time ever hearing this, I mean it wasn't the first time hearing it, I did not know it, but last year we had a parent, the child had a service dog, and that was our first time actually hearing about a service dog that was trying, they were either trying to get the service dog to come to school with the Right. The problem that the principal had, how could she keep the other children from getting right. on the dog and doing all of that? You see what I'm saying? Oh, that's those dogs are therapy dogs. Those they're the therapy dogs, yeah. Those are service dogs. Service dogs. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Well, the therapy dog. Okay, that's what happened. That was my first time here. I don't know what happened. We, yeah, but they still was concerned about how they were going to keep the rest and they were going to be a kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know if they need to bring. We need, you know, like we have AE kind of profession to work with them. Right, right. They know that they're prepared to come or something. I don't know what happened, but that parent was, that baby needed that. You're talking about a child specific dog that. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. They have that yeah. yeah. These are, these are dogs. I know what I'm talking about, what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm just bringing up that, that situation. Well, but there are, there are rules and guidelines that you use. Yeah, we have to go through. I've done my 
don't know what happened. Each, each child gets like five minutes, and it's, it's even better if you can get two or three dogs at one time. That way you can spread them out, and you can have two or three children going at like, one time, or even to the same dog. No, no, this was, yeah, this was a situation. Okay. And it, it, I, was gonna, I shouldn't have brought it up, but it was a situation that we didn't know to bring that baby, that dog, need to be with that child. But they were concerned, the principal was concerned about how we can keep the dog and the other kid is not actually involved in kindergarten. I don't know what happened. But it, that's something to think about, though. Yeah. How to treat it. So, you know, I know you're about to serve the dog. Go ahead. I just have a question. Uh, I'm thinking about some of the children with special needs. Do we have any one of the libraries, like the story time or anything else, that has anyone with the ability to sign? Not, not at this time. Not that I'm aware of. You don't have no sign? Yeah. The library, the library yeah. did pay for um, some staff members to attend um, some signing classes. I paid with the post office did because a friend of mine, she's a uh, she was there. She worked for the post office. They pay. They have a signing person to sign for her. They had this person to come and sign. I don't know what it is, but they did. I'm wondering. That's something to think about. We do have signs now. Right. We do have signs in the batch. We hire people to sign at that job. You know, Sharon Wright is that. You know, she's the one I want to know. Was there something like on board at one time? There was a sign on the sign? That would be good, yes. It's at least possible. We, we, I know the library paid for staff members to attend to sign the classes. Mm -hmm. But that's one of those skills, if you don't keep up, you lose your news at all. Before we move on, anything else? Going once, going twice? Satisfied curiosity, that's, uh, we're looking for ideas for lifelong learning programs. Um, our current TEDx salons were very well received the last time we did them. We've got another series of uh, TEDx swans coming up soon. Um, Dr. White. White's programs, every time she does one, we get 30, 40, 50 people to show up. We're, we're thinking we need more than Dr. White. We've got several universities in this area that can provide uh, speakers, so I'm looking at that as uh, different types of topics and stuff. So. Um, what would you guys like to see? I would like, like to see what we talked about earlier, and that is a really uh, easy to navigate, attractive website. And I'd like to see the library actually encouraging people on, on not every visit, but making sure that they're aware that any events, cultural events, uh, available resources, and so forth, and constantly change that and possibly even make it somewhat interactive ask a question, get a response, and so forth. And people love interactive type of software. But they can have a question on that software <coughs> on the website and get a response, a call, an answer to a question. Uh, and then you can advertise. I mean, it's, it's a tremendous resource if it's a real attractive, clean, easy to navigate website. But you got to keep in mind the patrons or the website. There's a lot of things happening at different brands. You may be interested in that. I think satisfying curiosity, make them aware that these things are potentially there for all these things, all the time. Understood. Daddy, you leaving us? Yeah, and I want to say this to you. I just said talking about voting, didn't it? And y'all need to vote on this way. And then you can't do a process, you can't do nothing, right? So I'm here. Whatever you vote for, I'm just saying that I'm here. You you want you want to pause pause D and go leave it go pause D and move to E. Oh, okay. We will we will table D. I have been, okay. With with the madam madam president. No, <laughs> we will we will table D for a minute and bring up E. Again, if you just look at E, it's just a bunch of information for the Louisiana compliance. It basically asking myself to sign a document that says we are breaking no laws, and it is to the best of my knowledge that we follow all the laws according to the state, according to the federal government, uh, according to the city. And uh, Jim and Susan and the city 
finance department keep us all straight? They do all of that. I, I do believe they've been asking the, the auditor has sent you guys the emails also. If you haven't uh, got one, look for it. Uh, asking about if you know of anything that looks shadier or anything of that nature, but trust me. Um, you know as well as I do, governmental agencies are perhaps the most watched organizations in the world. Quick yes, sir. I think I asked, so, 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 do we do most of our purchasing from state contract sole source of supply? That's what we do most of. We do most of our furniture purchasing that way. But I wouldn't say most of our purchasing because we want to bid on our, one of our biggest purchase areas is books. We have three separate bids for juvenile books, adult books, mixed media, and periodicals uh, where we do the bulk of our purchasing. And that bulk of our purchasing is bids, I would say. Okay. But we do a lot through state contracts. We do a little bit of state contracting. Vehicles for the most part? Yeah, vehicles and furniture. Uh, computers. All of our computers. computers. State contract state pricing. Do you notice that wasn't checked, so I figured that was That's because it has exactly A where yeah. I explain all that. You have to go all the way to the last page. Oh, then. Yeah, okay. That, that, that explains why we get a little bit of exemption from that. But basically, that's all this document says. And last year, the auditor didn't care whether or not you guys looked at it. This year, they want you to look yeah. that I've done this and we'll sign it. I promise you, I put my signature on it, send it off. It is as is. We've seen the document as it stands. Madam Chair, Yes, ma'am. Uh-uh, no, no, no. Do we still send the whole name in as Since this is 2016, this is oh, okay. the information based on That's 2016. Um, I move that we uh, accept the ethics report and um, that we review it as to our measures. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, they didn't say what you had to do with that. They said you had to vote for it. Centers. If you're at Belcher and you can't find the answer, all they have to do is pick up the phone and call one of the resource centers. We've got excellent collections. It goes all the way, funnels all the way to Maine and between Maine, Broadmoor, and Hamilton. We've got excellent reference collections. We've got excellent online uh, collections. You can get it answered by text, by telephone, by email, in person. Um, again, the only thing we don't do is chat. So that's kind of gone by the wayside a little bit, so the texting is far more appropriate than chat. Um, the last one is being an informed citizen. Um, again, the thing we heard most at, at our town halls about this one was buy more newspapers, buy more magazines, do more programs. Um, we've heard that, we're on it. Um, if you have a suggestion, we'll take it. If not, let me tell you a little bit about services and outcomes. Um, if you attended ALA or PLA recently, you may have seen um, what is called Project Outcome. It is it, 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 it's in about a four-year um, project for the Public Library Association. And what they're doing is they're, they're they're going, how do you truly measure the impact of a public library? Uh, our circulation per capita numbers, they look all right. But does that tell you how well that child learned to read, his love of reading, 
I just like what the public librarian gave me that comic book many, many years ago. You, 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 that counts as one statistic, but that doesn't sit here and represent what it did for me and my love of reading. So what we're trying to do with, with project outcome is take a look at how to measure those things besides just flat out statistics. We want to know what good did we do. So let me give you some objectives versus outcomes in what we're doing here. Um, this is what project outcome specializes in. It's the micro versus the macro outcomes. I know it's hard for you to read. This is one of the surveys. And this is, this is how project outcome works. They, they have us do random surveys all the time. Anybody who's done business knows customer satisfaction surveys. They're, they're constant. And that's one of the things Project Outcome does. It encourages you and provides you with the tools to do customer satisfaction. And not only measure their satisfaction, but measure the outcomes. Here is one of their surveys for the summer reading program. It asks, my child may change or increase their reading skills. I strongly disagree, disagree. I agree, I strongly agree. Well, there you go, you're asking the parent, did the summer reading program do what we intended it to do? Instead of just, what do we normally do? We say, yep, one registered, yep, one completed. But there we can actually ask the parent, did it help? Did it do what it wanted to? Is my child a more confident reader because of the summer reading program? Did my, my, my child read more often now, and uses the library more often? And then we also ask what, what, what is one of the things that you might have liked about the program. So this is Project Outcome. PLA has put lots of money, put lots of time into this. And we think it's a wonderful tool because it, it helps us determine those outcomes. Back to needs assessment that you were talking about earlier. This is kind of like an outcomes assessment. So we're going to use iPads. And working with colleges and universities, everybody's always looking to find out the placement rate. Right. And they were using the old bailout form. And the suggestion was made on the iPad. And they were able to find out the And the suggestion was made on the top team members to send that simple survey out of are you employed in the related field and so forth. Text it to them. You've got their number. And they'll answer that right away. But if you wait for them to fill it out on paper, put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, bring it to the post office, your responses are going to be even below this than that. What we've discovered in, in other organizations, what Project Outcome discovered, if you'll stand there at the back of that, that story time with an iPad with these simple four questions, and all they have to do is punch a button, and then you hit refresh, you can do it again as they're leaving. Try and get them to do paper to pencil, even walking out of the story time, not going to happen. And you don't have to get all of them. If you can get a representative sample, say you've got 10 mothers at a story time, you get four of them, you've got 40% of solid sample. So. Again, macro outcomes are already measured for us. Step forward, take a look at what they do. Kindergarten readiness, age three to four, uh, enrolled in school, low birth rate, we're not as worried so much about that, but trust me, child poverty has a lot to do with literacy rates, third grade ELA, basic and above, and fourth grade on time on level. Those are things that step forward as a macro outcome for a lot of what we do is already measured. If you take a look at what the parish public school does, increase high school gradual, gradual, graduation, wow, I'm going to get it out there for a second. Um, they already do that. I don't have to worry about measuring that macro outcome. Um, take a look at the city of Shreveport. They take a look at the metric of are we uh, promoting and supporting businesses and industries. That's one of those things that we, we, we have as one of our support services. And you can see where they take a look at that. They do that for us. So the macro outcomes, I'm not so much worried about. We've got our community partners we see doing that. What we need to worry about for us is our micro outcomes, individuals. And, and, and as we've been talking about in our marketing, that also helps us tell our story, especially when you get that mother telling you how wonderful it is. Or you get the gentleman today who called me, I wish you could have got him on tape, about just the great service he got and how wonderful she was helping him because he was computer illiterate. And she 
and helped him fill out the form he needed. That's the kind of stories we need to win elections. Sorry. Kind of overlooked it more, right? So, quickly, outcomes and values of our service values, that customer satisfaction is the one I think matters the most. Um, based on PLAs, um, project outcome, I came up with some of these service outcomes. It's late. They're too small to read up there. I will have Kathy send these to you, and you can take a look at them and give me all the suggestions you like. I picked 2022. Why did I pick that number, Susan? Because that's close to the time period we will have to go out for new for our tax renewals. There you go. So if we're meeting all these outcomes by 2022, we should be doing well when it comes time for our military renewal. So anyway, again, we did this for each one of the five services. And someone asked, what is next? Here we go. We're going to compile all of the answers to all of our town hall questions. Our, our friend Samantha back there has been doing that already. We're going to create five committees. I, I'm sure there's one individual on the board who might like to sit in on one of these. If she does, all she has to do is let me know. Let me know. Yeah, all right. And uh, what we will do is take all of this input, all of this, and then we want to take each one of these service priorities, and we want to make A, what we think our guidelines should be, and some outcomes, some milestones, and go forward with those. But I'm going to actually keep my hands out of it and let the staff do most of the work. They know the communities. We're going to make sure that all of our branches are well represented and have at it. Uh, so far, some of the stuff they've already come up with outside of the committees, it's been, like I've said, the YouTube story time, some of the other stuff they've come up with so far, it's exciting. I can't wait to see what they do when they really put the synergy together and start working. Um, we're going to start writing the strategic planning document, kind of putting all this information together. Um, I will send out a quick survey to you guys on just what you think is the most important parts of this you want in that document. I don't know that we want to put our peer-to-peer -peer comparisons in a document. I will also send you several other library strategic plans out there from the wonderful Snow Isle library system, one page document that is just the greatest thing on the planet because you can stick it right up there and be reminded all the time. Or we can go with the, what was it, Toronto that has, and Samantha's got a, it, it, it's an eight page one, and then there's one out there, I forget who it is, it's almost 100 pages. So you're gonna send us those? We'll, we'll send you all that and let you take a look at it and then We'll have individual discussions about just, you know, what you think. You can answer a quick survey for us and let us know. I guess thinking globally, okay, so like we did this today, so like what's the next, like what are the steps? Like so next is this and the next is that and then? The, ne the next thing we want to do is, well, we've already kind of, I'm going to let you look at the objectives to make sure that the, the outcomes, that's what we really want to do. Let you see that. And then from there, we want to let the staffs do that roadmap for each one of those five services. That's going to be something that may take a few months. Uh, but we can write and determine, as long as you guys are all in agreement that those five service priorities are where we want to go, and since those are, I mean, and understand, those are just priorities. It doesn't mean the rest of our services are going to go away. That just means where we're going to try and allocate our resources. I. I Early literacy, information fluency, informed citizens. If you take a look at our current statistics and stuff, that's what we currently specialize in anyway. So our customers really want what we're already doing for them. What I want to figure out is how to do what we're doing better and not necessarily have to spend a whole lot more money. So um, if you want to talk more about this later, we can. I try and explain to you my madness so you can understand exactly where I'm trying to go with it. So anyway, um, wow. We're 30
through. That's that. Um, Did that include your <laughs> that, 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 that really just gets us started, to be honest with you. This, that, that, that's what, that was the information gathering process. Now it's the putting it all together, thinking it all through, and making that roadmap. It's, that, that's the next, that's the hardest part. The hardest part is coming. This was easy. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Samantha. Um, my report's easy. I, I gave it to you already. Uh, let me just highlight a few things. Um, oh, again, something you were introduced to last year, our statistical reports, but this is what happens when you take my information and let a marketing person play with it. There you go. Doesn't it just look so much cleaner and nicer? easier to read. Um, again, all the all the goals update, most of, most of that is through uh, the strategic planning. Uh, I, I will point out number G, I have attended defensive driving, and I have had my lessons on how to drive this from things. Now I am mobile in our mobile library. Um, again, I have to uh, make you aware of this, and, we're entering in with a new partnership unless someone just going to vehemently disagree with me. Uh, the North Louisiana Civil Rights Coalition is looking for some place to help get started with their museum. They, uh, they've got a location, what they don't have is any money, and they are asking us to provide them a footprint to start with. They have really had their eyes set on our downtown library, but let's be honest, they can't have that just yet. Um, they don't even have a collection yet, so we're going to work with them to create a footprint on our third floor uh, in our local history area, and uh, it's an exciting partnership that I, I look forward to uh, seeing what goes on with that. Anyway, I completed a literacy volunteer uh, in, at uh, my Through Step Forward uh, with Mrs. Lou Valentine's third grade class, and I got a big, great big thank you card that I left out to be to share with you. Um, Quick overview of the budget. If you'll take a quick look at March, which puts us a quarter of the way through the year, revenues were solid. And if you'll look at expenditures, personnel was only at 21%, which means that, that explains part of the uh, pension. Books and library materials is a little bit ahead because, well, they, they want to get a head start on that stuff. So they're spending it. Utilities is up a bit. Um, supplies, our capital debt is almost at 95%, which pushes that expenditures total at 24%, a little bit ahead of where it would be. Then if you look at April, uh, which puts us a third of the way through the year, you'll see very similar numbers. Our revenues are on target. Again, personnel is a little bit behind because we're not spending all that money, and now we're about to move some of that, thanks to the board, into maintenance, books, and library materials. The acquisitions department is on it. People are crying for materials. Um, cataloging is getting, getting it done. Utilities, again, is up a little bit, which worries me, but that's OK. Um, and again, our capital debt pushes that a little higher because we're at 95% of that 600000 um, that is my report. Do you have any questions about the budget? Not about the budget, John, but the, um, you said the North West Louisiana Civil Rights Association? Um, I don't think they're an association. Oh, oh, they are a coalition. Where are they going to have space? In the main library? We're, we're, we're looking to put them on the third floor in the main library. We're going to shoot one in somewhere there. Um, they need something of a footprint as soon as possible, or else they're going to lose some of their support and we don't want them to lose their support so we're going to be good community partners in our time. Any questions? If not, that is my report. Okay, I'll answer you quickly. Um, in terms of having selected for all um, 12 full-time branches and then for the um, five, five part-time branches to uh, 
um, felt that they had a need for the interns. They brought in place and they've been contacted and they'll do orientation here on May 30th and then they start work as early as May 31st. And Deontay, how many interns is that? Um, 24, 29 in public services. Right. Okay. I'm not sure of it. There's quite a few here at Sport Service Building, I think two or three. Oh, Samantha says four, and four will be placed here. See that marketing and then two in Catalan. Um, Lovette Fuller hosted the College Preparedness Program at Wallet, North Catalan College in Union Avenue. And she didn't have a good turnout, but she's tweaking the program and will publicize it more so that um, the teenagers, high school students would be interested in attending the classes. Um, library, library's community engagement team promoted the library and its services at the Southern Hills Music in the Park event, and they interacted with about 50 attendees. Well, the library staff had a presence at Art Break on the 29th of April, and they promoted the library and services to about 800 attendees. They actually drove the Sprinter van into the convention center, and so it was inside this time. The past has been parked on the outside, and it was actually inside the convention center. Um, staff members are gearing up for summer reading. Today is our um, system-wide time. <coughs> our system-wide time today. For the majority of the branches, we have two part-time branches who will be doing system-wide time up tomorrow, as they're not open on Monday. Um, the summer feeding program, pilot program, the plans are being finalized. Um, Tom was asking about that. Just to let you know, the library partnered with the Northwest Louisiana Food Bank and seven branches opted to participate. They will be feeding um, kids up to age 18, and if they are, um, if anyone is disabled, they may be fed up to age 21. They'll be um, serving the shelf stable food, and this is what it looks like. The food bank will deliver the foods. The branches will just have to store them and serve them. Um, and they'll serve them during summer reading. The summer feeding program will run concurrently with summer reading program. Is that daily? Yes. This is the first time. Yeah, this is the first time we done the something. What kind of food is um, there's a juice, it's a strawberry kiwi juice, a four ounce um, applesauce, some graham sticks, a peanut butter pouch, one cheese stick, stick um, eight ounce milk, and then they, they give a fork and a napkin and all that. But they have, uh, I think, five different lunches, and the branches will be serving all of the different ones. The branches, have, the branches participate have already been inspected by a representative from the health department and they've received their temporary permits to participate. So they'll be doing the feeding in the meeting rooms and mostly will, the, uh, the feeding will take place after the scheduled summer meeting program. So basically they'll have people, that the kids there are ready to serve. But you said that's going to be from the state department also? Mm -hmm. That's from the state department? No, this is from the food bank, but someone from the health department had to inspect the branches participating. Yeah. Which branches are they there? Um, Atkins, David Rains, Hamilton, South Caddo, Maine, Moortown, Wallet, and West Street. So Wallet and David Rains are considered closed sites because they are in close proximity to other organizations who are some feeding sites. Yeah, they have range right. across from Lake Bethlehem and Wallet next door to J.S. Clark. And then personnel changes in public services. Jennifer French, who was the assistant branch manager of Broadmoor, has been promoted to branch manager. And we now have a programming outreach librarian that is Lauren Metzger, who was the um, branch manager at Cedar Grove, and last but not least, and unfortunately, our manager of the Hamilton South Cattle branch will work her last day on this coming Friday. So she has resigned. Can't blame her. 
she's going to well, Minden. Minden. Um, and Beverly Hammond is the director there, and Beverly's going to retire soon. And Shelly, she lives in Minden, she drives here every day. Golden opportunity to move forward. Uh, at this time,